So in this segment, we're gonna dig into the electrical and electronics work of my Ultimate Office Makeover video series. So if you like this content, please stick around and let's get on with the video. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Well, this is part three of my multi-part video series on my ultimate office makeover. So today we are going to dig into the electrical and electronics that I built to drive the office and provide all the lighting and the control systems. I'm gonna start by digging into the plan on how I wanted to tackle the project and then show some video of the build process very exciting. And then we'll wrap it up with a quick summary of how it went. <laughs> All right, with that, let's go ahead and cut over to the video series. All right, here we are with the design of the office space. If you will remember from part one, if you have not watched that video, I will link it above and down below. There are a number of different components in the office design. There is this vertical cabinet here, the horizontal cabinet here, the vertical bookcase shelf here, and then we have the two desks, one for the computer for the CNC, and then the CNC desk. And then we have the soldering station over here. So the plan for wiring is very straightforward. So we're gonna put the power supply right here for the vertical storage and run the wires up through the back side and then bring them in through holes. And then for the horizontal storage, put the power supply right here in the corner so that's kind of hidden from view and then run the wires horizontally for the LEDs. Okay, let's switch over to the vertical storage and I'll get a little bit more specific. So if you remember from part one, I routed these grooves into the panels prior to assembly. This is where the LEDs will go. And then I cut holes, drilled holes into the back panel to allow the wire to come through. So the power supply will be down here, the wires will run up to this hole, into the U channel, and then out the hole up to the next panel, and so on and so on. For the horizontal storage unit, similar situation where there's the routed channels, which you saw in part one. And there's little holes here notched out in the back where the power supply can run wires down and up to the LEDs. All right, well, that is the design. Let's go ahead and cut over to the build video and let's get on with it. So the building of the electronics started by me attaching the LEDs that I got on Amazon to a power supply that I had laying around. Just wanted to test and make sure they worked properly. Next, I attached the LEDs to the channel that I had routed in the cabinets. And the thought was I would clip the wires off that I installed whenever I was putting the unit into place and simply solder the LEDs directly onto the wires. Well, this turned out to be just an epic fail. There was just simply no way that I could get into this cabinet and get access to the wires and try to solder some relatively large wires onto relatively small pads on these LED strips. After my epic failure of trying to solder the LEDs directly into place, I decided to pre-manufacture all of the LED segments on the desk so that I had direct access to all of the LEDs and the pads. In this case, I stripped back a little bit of wire that I had laying around and connected the corners using individual wire segments. This is a close-up of the corners where I manually soldered wire segments in. They don't look too pretty, but they do work and they are functional, so in the end, I think it worked out okay. With the entire segment pre-manufactured, I moved over to installing them into the cabinet in the groove that I had routed. I started this by soldering one end to the wires that would feed the signal and power, and then pulled the backing off and stuck the LEDs to the cabinet using the glue that is on the back of the LEDs. This glue is not very strong and ultimately failed pretty quickly, so I ended up using some caulking to hold the LEDs into place. 
with the LEDs connected, I did a quick test drive, and so this is a real-time shot of the LEDs in place, and I think they Never look really the great. Never. Manually soldering each corner using the individual wire segments was very tedious and turned out not to be terribly reliable, so I purchased some pre-manufactured corner units from Amazon with the theory that they would make the installation a lot easier and a lot faster. These specific connectors are simply pressure fit and you snap a little white plastic lid over it to lock it into place. Once again, it turns out that this wasn't terribly reliable, so I did end up simply soldering the connectors into place. And if I had to do it again, I would just simply forego the white plastic case completely. Nearing the end of the installation of the LEDs, I purchased a massive uh, 60 amp power supply to provide adequate power to all of the LEDs. In Fusion 360, I custom designed an enclosure for the power supply and the wireless control modules. And then using my Prusa i3 Mark II, I printed it in Joel Telling High 5 Blue. It turned out pretty amazing. It seems that I didn't get any video of the installation and building of the control unit, but because it was custom designed for the specific power supply and my two wireless modules, everything fit perfectly and it went together very well. With all of the wireless devices in my new Ultimate office, I wanted a unit that could sit on the desk that would allow me to turn the lights on and off easily without pulling out my phone or opening a web page. So I designed this custom controller that you see here in front of you that is also Wi-Fi enabled and I integrated it with Home Assistant to control all the lights in the office. Well, here is the screen that I implemented to help control all of the lights in the office. So this is a programmable LCD that has a touch control. Uh, it's resistive touch, not capacitive. So you have to use this little wand to make it easier. Your finger will work, but I find that this little wand works better. So what do we have here? We have a bunch of buttons to control the various lights in the office, which I'll talk about in a minute. A little area over here with the date and time and the current temperature in the room. I actually built a couple temperature sensors, uh, one of which I put in the office here just to keep track of the temperature in the room. And then down at the bottom, I just have some connectivity information here for this wireless controller. All right, let's start at the top. So what we have here is a button which controls the scene in the office. That actually is one button to turn on a number of different lights in the office so that I only have to click each of the individual lights. Below that, we have buttons for each of the individual lights in the office, the cabinet lights, the horizontal and vertical cabinets, where I can control the color and the brightness here. The desk lights, which is a light that I have over here behind my computer to provide a little backlighting for videos and for video calls. I have a separate button for some video lights specifically designed to light me when I'm recording face videos. And then uh, I have a button for the lava lamp that I got whenever I was in college. So you can see here, if you click the desk light, for example, which is on, you can see the glow right here. We'll click the desk light and it turns off. It's fairly responsive. It reaches out to the home assistant and gives it a little instruction and then home assistant turns around and sends commands to the Wi-Fi enabled plugs that I have in the office here. I do have a second screen here that uh, the intent is to be able to control the individual cabinets and their colors and their uh, brightness as well as the backlighting brightness for this screen. But I only I haven't implemented colors yet in the Home Assistant. So with that, here you go. That's it. That is the wireless controller. If you're interested in a specific video about how I built this and how I configured it and integrated it with Home Assistant, happy to do that. Any questions or comments on this specific thing, please leave them in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Well, that was the build. I hope you enjoyed it. Super exciting, very frustrating at times. I will certainly say that the two hours I spent trying to wire that cabinet <laughs> 
on a variety of ladders and whatnot was perhaps some of the most frustrating time I've spent building anything in quite some time. And I certainly can tell you that I want that two hours of my life back. There's no doubt about that. All right, beyond all that, it was a very exciting build and it worked out very well in the end. So I am very happy with the results. All right, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, well, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but please leave your comments down below. Tell us why, and we will make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. All right, thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you so much for... Thank you so much for what? Thank you so much for watching. Watching. <laughs> How is the video? Cause the audio looks good. Is it bright enough? I don't know. Can we brighten it? This I don't know. I need a monitor. No cabinet in the main part of the office. So the original plan was to have the power supply down here in the lower right hand corner of the bottom of the cabinet. Then I'm going to put the 3D printers in and that is actually uh, 96 inches tall approximately actually. <clears throat> so this cabinet is 92 inches tall and about uh, 24 inches wide. Let's see. Uh, nope. 30 inches wide, okay, uh, 30, 30.5, so 31, yeah, so 